When you make an organic t-shirt, people just absolutely have no idea how many hands are touching that garment from the farm to the finished product to being on somebody's body. మీకు మొదటి నుంచి మీరు గడ్డి పికలు వేసినప్పుడు ఎలా ఉండేది మనకి సేంద్రీయ పద్ధతికి మారిన తర్వాత బెనిఫిట్లు ఏమున్నాయి నెక్స్ట్ వీటి మీద పురుగులు కూడా ఏవి కూడా వాళ్ళు అంతగా సేంద్రీయ పద్ధతిలోనే అదే వేరే అనుకోండి అవి హైబ్రిడ్ అనుకోండి వాటికి పురుగు శాతం ఎక్కువ వస్తుంది ఊర్లో ఏమన్నా ప్రాబ్లమ్స్ కానీ ఏమన్నా జరిగేవా వచ్చేవి ఏం ప్రాబ్లమ్స్ ఉండేవి అలాగే క్యాన్సర్ ఏ జబ్బులు ఏ కాళ్ళు రాపడము చేతులు రాపడము ఇప్పుడు మరి ఏం లేవులే కొంచెం ఆరోగ్యంగా ఉన్న మనుషులము పంటలు కూడా వస్తున్నాయి బాగానే ఉన్నాయి హీటు అలాగ తగ్గిపోయి మన చల్లగా అయిపోయి చనిపోయే రోజులు కూడా ఉన్నాయి కొంతమంది అలాంటివి ఇవన్నీ చూసి మా కొంచెం ఇవన్నీ కూడా ఇబ్బంది అనిపించింది మాకు అంటే అదే మాకు ఫ్యూచర్లో వాళ్ళకి జరిగింది మాకు జరగదని గ్యారంటీ లేదు కదా రసాయనం వచ్చి రసాయనం వ్యవసాయం వ్యవసాయం చేసేటప్పుడు మళ్ళీ మా ఆర్గానిక్ చేయడం వల్ల మాకు మాకు ఎలాగో మా దగ్గర పశువులు గట్రా అన్నీ ఉంటాయి The three biggest cotton growing countries in the world are China, India and the United States. The infrastructure for manufacturing is much stronger in India and China than in the United States. And Indian farmers really do have an affinity for wanting to do healthy, uh, sustainable agriculture. We have an office, EcoFashion Corp has an office in India. So we have a whole team on the ground that manages our productions, manages our cotton farms, manages our factories, inspections and sourcing in QC. So the, just the relationship is very, very strong. This whole climatic change, this whole environment friendly production lines and everything that we do to make sure that everything is sustainable and traceable is the core of our business. GOTS is a global standard for organic textiles and the idea of GOTS is to make sure that the whole chain of production which starts from fiber to the end product is completely traceable. The GOTS standard is the highest standard of a finished organic textile. Why? Because it includes not just the cotton itself, but it includes what is in that textile across the board from the dyes to the finishes to the packaging. The hang tags have to be post-consumer recycled. We can't use any lead. We can't use buttons or, or zippers on jackets that have heavy metals. Everything is really heavily regulated and traced across the board. This is the history of the, this role. What dye, what is the weight of the thing and who did it and what time in which machine everything is being recorded here the documentation levels in a got certified supply chain are very serious all the way from the cotton you can measure this cotton went to this yarn went to this fabric went to this garment went to this brand went to this retailer and you can track it across the way so gots is very important to me it's something that i was a part of building um, i was on the team of people that wrote the got standard in the 90s we're now going in our sixth version of that standard so we're always raising the bar people may not realize that buying an organic garment that isn't certified to the GOT standard basically tells you nothing about the dyes and the finishes that it might be used. So you might think it's organic because somebody labeled it correctly or incorrectly in terms of the content, but they could be using some organic cotton in the product, but then be like literally, you know, bathing it, <laughs> if you will, in toxic chemicals. We also look for fair trade practices and principles and social compliance and that can be done in a few different ways whether it's a fair trade textile standard certification or it's a SA8000 or RAP. So we've built long-term relationships with factories that we've learned, you know, the good, the bad, and the ugly, who to trust and who not to trust through our own experience. Um, so many of our factories are long-term partners. 
We also look for a sense of we're in this together, not me against you, not me at you, but us together. Because if we work holding hands on finding solutions and innovating together, we're all going to win. Good thing is now people are realizing this challenge is an opportunity and not a threat. So going back again to, you know, like a decade ago, people thought this is a threat wherein they might lose business because they are not compliant enough to do a certain kind of business which has to do with sustainability, recycling, reuse. But now the whole mindset has changed. People are thinking now this is an opportunity, this is future. This is what they need to be doing. So they, they, the, not only, the, not only the, the process which is related to production, but they also understand that what a customer is looking at, what a customer is thinking while they are buying products. So the whole idea of sustainability has traveled right from the customer to the to the last person in the production process to the lowest level where they understand if they don't follow sustainability if they don't follow certain rules of the game today they'll be left behind i love collaborating with like-minded organizations like four ocean because we share a vision to shift the paradigm of business and to demonstrate that you don't have to compromise on social or environmental progress or priority, you can actually have it all. And it's about yes and, it's about no compromise. It's not an easy process. And when you see people selling a t-shirt for a $4.99, you gotta wonder there, like they're still going through all those processes. So you think of who gets crammed down in the end are the farmers and the workers by understanding how to build a supply chain from the farm all the way to the finished product. Managing that process efficiently, we're able to be competitive on pricing with fair values, fair treatment of our farmers and our workers. And it's again, a win-win business model where we honor at the end of the day, the seed and the farmer as the soul and the source of our products.